Hi, in this video of import, we shall work with drug assimilation model. We shall study two models of assimilation of cold pill into the bloodstream. And uh, the first model would be when a single cold pill is uh, assimilated. And the second would be when a course of pills are assimilated in the bloodstream. When we take a cold pill, the drug that is present inside the pill dissolves in the gastrointestinal tract or the GI tract and each of the ingredients is diffused into our bloodstream. Then they are carried to the locations in which they have to act and then they are removed from the blood by the help of kidneys and the liver. The assimilation and the removal processes may occur at different rates for different ingredients of the same pill. Let's now uh, form the compartmental diagram for uh, the general case. So this problem can be considered to be consisting of two compartments. One uh, being the GI tract and the other being the bloodstream. So let's make these two compartments. So our first compartment is GI tract and second one is the bloodstream. So both of these uh, compartments have a single input and a single output. So in the GI tract as input we have drug. So there is drug intake and uh, then this is digestion. And from blood it is sent to tissues. So this is the input output compartmental diagram for drug assimilation. Now we shall apply balance law. So by balance law we have we have two equations because there are two compartments so the first one says that the rate of change of drug in the GI tract this is equal to rate of drug intake minus the rate at which drug leaves the GI tract and the second equation is the rate of change of drug in bloodstream Uh, this is equal to rate of uh, rate at which drug enters the blood minus the rate at which drug leaves blood. These are the word equations. Uh, next we shall consider the case of a single cold pill. So in both the cases that is the case of a single cold pill and the case uh, of the course of pills we will let xt to be the amount of a drug in GI tract at time t and we let yt to be the amount of a drug in bloodstream at time t. So let's start with the single cold pill. So let's start with the first case that is of single cold pill. In this case, we consider that the pill has already been swallowed in the GI tract 
and so after this there is nothing going inside the gi tract uh, then the pill dissolves and diffuses into the blood stream fr from the gi tract so if you consider uh, the model that is the compartment diagram so it was like this this is the gi tract this is the blood stream so because we have considered that uh, the pill has already been swallowed so there is zero input okay because we are not taking anything na uh, there is nothing going uh, or entering in the gi tract and there is only one output term and uh, then we'll talk about the blood stream so uh, for this output term we assume that the output rate is proportional to the drug concentration in the gi tract so from this we shall form the uh, equation so by balance law we have uh, dx by dt this is the rate of change of drug in the gi tract so this is for the first compartment okay this is our first compartment and this is our second compartment so rate of change of uh, drug in the gi tract this is equal to uh, the rate of drug intake and here rate of drug intake is zero minus rate of drug that leaves the gi tract and we have assumed that the output rate is proportional to the drug concentration so this is some constant time x okay so here k1 is a constant of proportionality uh, this is a positive constant so k1 is a positive coefficient of proportionality also our initial condition is x0 is equal to x0 and here x0 is the amount of drug in the pill so because we have already swallowed the pill there must be some amount of drug in the pill so that is the amount of drug in the pill it is our initial condition and now we'll talk about the second compartment now let's talk about the second compartment that is the blood stream so in the second compartment that is in the blood stream uh, the initial amount of drug this is zero and this implies that y zero is zero okay so there was no uh, drug inside the blood stream initially so y zero is zero now the level of the drug increases as the drug so slowly and gradually the drug would diffuse from gi tract to the blood stream right so as the drug diffuses from the gi tract and uh, decreases as the kidneys and liver remove it so what happens in the blood stream uh, the drug gets diffused from the gi tract and uh, so that increases the level of concentration of the drug in the blood stream and then after that it is uh, removed from the blood stream through the kidney and liver and which decreases the, its concentration so our equation becomes so again by balance law we have dy by dt that is uh, the rate of change of drug in the blood this is equal to k1x minus k2y uh, this this was the rate of uh, the drug that enters the blood and this should be equal to the rate of the blood that 
rate of the uh, drug that is removed from the GI tract, right? Because whatever amount of drug is removed from GI tract, it is entering inside the blood. So this is K1X we have taken previously, and the rate that is removed uh, from the blood is K2Y. So here again, K2 is a constant of proportionality. And also, we have already taken that y0 is 0. So, this is our initial condition. Now, we shall proceed to solve this equation. Now, we solve the first equation. So, this is a variable separable. So, we get dx by x is equals to minus k1 dt. And this implies integrating on both sides, we will get ln x is equals to minus k1 t plus some constant c. So, this gives us x is equals to e raised to power minus k1 t into c and uh, because x0 is equals to x0, so this gives x0 is equal to c because e raised to power 0 is 1. So, our solution is given by x is equals to x0 e raised to power minus k1 t. Now, to obtain the solution of the second equation, we substitute this. So, we get dy over dt is equals to k1 x0 e raised to power minus k1 t minus k2 y. So, let's uh, solve this. This equation can be written as uh, dy over dt plus k2 y is equal to k1 uh, x0 e raised to power minus k1 t. So, this is a linear equation. Uh, hence, the integrating factor, this is given by e raised to power integration of k2 dt. And this is equal to e raised to power k2 t. So, the solution is given by y into integrating factor that is e raised to power k2 d, k2 t is equals to integration of uh, this term into integrating factor that is k1 x0 e raised to power minus k1 t into the integrating factor that is e raised to power k2 t dt plus some constant c. So, this implies y e raised to power k2 t this is equal to x0 k1 integration of e raised to power k2 minus k1 t dt plus the constant c and this is equal to x0 k1 uh, e raised to power k2 minus k1 t divided by k2 minus k1 plus the constant c. Here we are considering that k2 is different from k1. So, this is the solution for k2 not equal to k1. Otherwise, this is not defined. k2 minus uh, x0 k1 e raised to power minus e raised to power k2 minus k1 t divided by k2 minus k1. This won't be defined. So, we shall substitute the initial condition and obtain the solution. So, this was the solution for y. Now, substituting y0 is equal to 0, you will get c to be equal to minus k1 x0 divided by k2 minus k1 and from here you get y e raised to power k2 t this is equal to k1 x0 divided by k2 minus k1 into e raised to power k2 minus k1 t minus 1 and so this implies that y t is given by k1 x0 divided by k2 minus k1 into e raised to power minus k1 t minus e raised to power minus k2 t. Also, we had obtained xt to be equal to x0 e raised to power minus k1 t. So, their graphs would be like, so here if we have time on the x-axis and uh, concentration of drug on the uh, y-axis, so if this is x0, then this is going to be the graph for the GI tract and uh, the graph for bloodstream would be like 
this so this is for gi tract uh, this is for gi tract and this is for blood stream so as t tends to infinity x tends to 0 and y tends to 0 uh, also note that these solutions are for k1 not equal to k2 so when k1 is equal to k2 you will get let's say these are equal to k you will get xt is equals to uh, x0 e raised to power minus kt and yt would be k x0 t e raised to power minus kt this you can easily obtain by solving the equations as we have solved for k1 not equal to k2 so let's start with our model 2 so what happens uh, there are many diseases like cold uh, in which taking just one pill is not sufficient so in that case we take a course of pills that is more than one pill two or three say at a time so in this case what happens uh, there is a continuous flow of drug continuous flow of drugs in the GI tract okay so uh, we assume that I is a positive constant so we let I be a positive constant representing the ingestion or the intake of the drug into GI tract okay so uh, I is the intake and uh, uh, we adjust our previous model this way so the output would be uh, same that is k1x from the GI tract which would go into the blood and from the blood we will have uh, k2y output so the system of equations or our uh, model uh, equations for our model becomes dx over dt is equal to i minus k1x with x of 0 is equal to 0 now uh, since you have not assumed that we have swallowed rather we are assuming we are taking i to be the in constant ingestion of the drug so we have x0 is equal to 0 and dy over dt this is equal to k1x minus k2x by balance law and our y at 0 is equal to 0 so this becomes our uh, model so we have solved these two systems for xt and yt so first one is easily solved by separating the variables and substituting x0 is equal to 0 so finally we get xt is equal to i uh, by k1 into 1 minus e raised to power k1t and the second one is solved by uh, it is a linear equation so we first of all find the integrating factor and then solve get the solution uh, and substituting y0 is equal to 0 we get the value of the constant and then finally yt now let's see their graphs so from the solutions it is clear that as t tends to infinity xt tends to i by k1 because e raised to power minus uh, k1 t tends to 0 as t tends to infinity and similarly yt this tends to i by k2 so uh, in the graphs we have on x axis time and on the y axis the amount of drug and we have uh, these two i0 by k1 and i0 by k2 so the yellow graph is the graph of xt so this is for xt which tends to i0 by k1 as t goes to infinity so as t goes to infinity here this tends to i0 by k1 and uh, the red graph is for yt which tends to i0 by k2 as t tends to infinity so this completes uh, the model for drug assimilation into the blood.